did you ever wish that you had better self-control? I know I sure do. Uh, I went to Costco the other day, and they had these candies out here. There's in the, they're in a big tub. They're these uh, almond toffees. Oh, my gosh, they're delicious. Look, I've eaten over half of them already. I hate to tell you how long ago it was that I bought them. It was very recently that I bought these, and I'm already almost uh, done with them. <laughs> I can't make myself stop. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just do something like check a box somewhere and then that was the willpower box. And then from that point forward, uh, you would no longer do what you're trying to stop doing. Well, fortunately, <laughs> we do have something like that in Windows because there are certain things in Windows that you shouldn't do or that you don't want your users to do. And all you have to do is click a box and within seconds, they can't do that anymore. And that, my friends, is something we call group policy. Now, even though the word group is there, it doesn't really have much to do with groups. Yes, security groups are involved, uh, but you don't uh, right-click on a security group and apply a group policy to it or something like that. Uh, these are really policies that have, really, there's thousands of settings. There's Last, last I looked, there was over 3,000 settings, and I know they've added to them since then. It's been a while since I looked. But there's at least 3,000 settings that can be configured in this thing. And so, as a result, what is group policy? It's a way of managing, a central way, and that's very important, central way of managing user and computer environments. And when I say central, that's very important because, you see, we can actually configure what we call a local policy on individual computers. Here I'm on a Windows 10 computer, and uh, I can just go to uh, gpedit.msc, and that opens up a console here. Uh, the settings I'm going to show you here only apply to this one computer. That's why it says right up here at the top local computer policy now what kind of settings could i configure here i'm going to show you some examples or you know in the slide here in a moment but let's say that one of the things that we want to prevent people from doing is to just go to control panel because there's so many settings in there that you can control things with right control panel okay so there it is and you know this is kind of the old-fashioned way of doing it i guess but in a lot of ways a lot of people still prefer going here as opposed to going to the the settings item it seems to me that's harder to find what you want but there's all kinds of stuff we could get into here that maybe we shouldn't get into that could cause a problem, especially if you're an average user, not an administrator, okay? So if we wanted to prevent people from getting into that, how would we do that? One of the ways we could do that would be go into the user configuration here in this local policy and then go down into administrative templates. Now, administrative templates are mostly, really all, registry settings. So when I select a setting there and enable it, disable it, whatever setting I'm, I've decided to do, then that really makes a registry change. It usually flips a bit in the registry there. So if I go to control panel here, I can say prohibit access to control panel and PC settings. Let's actually test that. Uh, if I go to right click here and go into settings, notice that I can access settings here as well as the control panel, which I just showed you. So if I go into this, I can enable that. Now, what does that enable? If you look at it, let's look at it again. Prohibit access to control panel and PC settings. Uh, you, you have to read this carefully because what is it enabling? It's enabling the prohibition here. So in other words, it's preventing me from being able to access control panel or the settings. And if you get a little confused with that sometimes, the help is excellent here. Um, I used to know some people that uh, participated in writing all the help system here. They're really sharp. Uh, and they're usually very, very clear here. So if you're not quite sure what it's going to do if you click enabled or disabled or whatever, just look at the help. It's really very helpful. So now I've enabled prohibiting access, and let's take a look at what happens next. If I go to, again, control panel, and uh, just type control and try to access it, eh, can't do it. Because guess what? Some administrator has prevented me from being able to do that. In this case, it's myself. Then if I try to go into the system settings here like by right-clicking on the start menu and going to settings, it just kind of blinks at you, and then nothing happens. It just says, did I click it? Well, I thought I clicked it. Let's see what happens. Let me try it again. Well, there it goes. Now, but nothing happens. Oh, there it goes away. So uh, it just kind of pops open for a moment, and then it just disappears. Now, as great a setting as that is, what else have I done here? If you think about it, yeah, I'm logged on as an administrator here. Let me show you. I'm logged on as, who am I logged on as? Uh, Phoenix Admin 01. Uh, and if I go into my settings here, excuse me, a command prompt that is, and I do a who am I all, uh, what's my privileges here? Look, I am a administrator. I'm a local administrator. I am a domain admin. I am an enterprise admin. I pretty much have full rights over everything except for this one computer where I can't even get into control panel now. 
And that, my friends, is why we generally don't want to edit local policy because it applies to everyone. Now, there's a way around that, um, which I'm not going to get into right now, but uh, you, you can adjust settings there so that it doesn't apply to a specific group such as the local administrator security group. But the better way to do that is to use group policy instead of local policy. And before I forget what I've done here, let me go back in here and re-enable this before I lock myself out of everything. Notice, by the way, that I went to uh, not configured as opposed to enabled. There's also this disabled setting. If I choose not configured or disabled, those will have the same net effect right now. Uh, and we will get into those settings a little bit more on what they mean. But the basic idea here for right now for our immediate remedy is to not choose enabled, okay? And that's what's going to give me these settings back. And I'll click OK there. And then going back out here, if I go back again and try to access control panel now, then we can see that, yes, I can. And if I try to go to my settings here again, yes, I can here as well. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I'm, I can see my front window that looks out in front of my house right here. And uh, my neighbor is walking by with his dog, and they always leave a mess in my yard. <laughs> so I wish there was a check mark that could prevent that from happening. Now, I just kind of wanted to give you an introduction into the kind of settings you can configure there. And we did it on the local basis, but mostly we will be doing this in the domain, like I said before. And it's going to be configured alongside Active Directory. It is integrated with Active Directory and Sysvol. And in the Sysvol, there's a number of different things that will be stored there. There are actually template files. You don't really double-click on them and look directly into them and, and edit them or something like that in Notepad or whatever. Uh, but there are template files there that can configure what kind of settings we can set there. Also, there's other things that are stored in the Sysvol, such as startup scripts, log on scripts, shutdown scripts, log off scripts. Uh, so those things can also be configured there. And then if you want to know some of the other kinds of policies that could be configured there, uh, some other sample, I just call them sample GPOs because there's things that might commonly be used. One of those would be to configure the password policy. Uh, we've done that in the past, in fact. Uh, elsewhere within this course, and that's where you can set things such as the password complexity, whether or not you use it, which of course you should, uh, the password length, uh, how long the password's good for, the password expiration, in other words, password history, all those sorts of things can be configured. Generally, those are configured through the default domain policy. Uh, that's one of the only things that I recommend that you configure in the default domain policy. It's a good practice to configure other settings in other policies. Okay, so that's the password policy. Uh, other things like maybe disable log off. I don't know why I put that up there. That's just one of the settings I can think of uh, off the top of my head. Just an example. Uh, prevent changing the desktop background. There might be a computer that has a, a specific wallpaper that we have to have. Maybe it's got uh, company logos on it, something like that. We want to maintain a company identity. We don't want people to be able to put personal expression of any kind on their work, workstations. Uh, or maybe their workstations that the public sees as they come into the building or something like that. Maybe on kiosk machines, that sort of thing. We might just not want any desktops to be changed. Now, there are at least 13 key functions or areas with a group policy that can be configured. I'm going to list just a few of them. We're not going to go over all of them. But a uh, the few of the main ones there are going to be registry settings. Now, remember I told you earlier when I did things such as uh, prohibit access to control panel or settings, uh, that's actually a registry bit that gets flipped. Uh, that's normally going to be done in administrative templates. And in fact, it's way beyond our scope. But if you have something that you need to be configured uh, on a broad basis across, let's say, all of your workstations, but there's not a setting for it in administrative templates, you can even custom configure registry settings and use group policy to distribute that to all of your clients, for example. Uh, there's also software deployment or prevention of running software. This is a little bit more um, not used as much as it used to be, So, especially the software deployment. Nowadays, we usually use other things, such as System Center, to deploy software. You can still use GPO if you want to. It's just a little bit clumsy compared to a full-featured product like System Center. Uh, you can also use this, though. This might be a little bit more useful to prevent running certain software. There might be, for example, an executable that you don't want your users to run at all. Uh, you can prevent that software from being run, for example. Folder redirection is also one that's pretty useful. So, for example, instead of having people using a local documents folder, or my documents as it used to be called, uh, we can redirect that to a network share where we have centralized backup, centralized virus scan, and we're able to manage that data in one location instead of on thousands of separate desktop computers. So folder redirection could be very useful for that. Also, we could redirect things like profiles to a central location. Scripts, as I mentioned earlier, startup scripts, shutdown scripts, 
Log on scripts, log off scripts. Security settings is another item that's very important with this. So for example, oh, you might have certificates that may be from a partner organization that you want to import into your organization so that you, your users' computers can trust it. Well, you can do that here with it as well with security. And again, we talked about passwords as well. And lots more settings. Like I said, there's 13 major areas, but these are probably some of the key ones that you'll see in this area. So that's an introduction into group policy and the kinds of things that they can do for you. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. One more, just one more, and then I'm going to quit.